Hello everyone, welcome back to the next video installment of the Lighterama program and software. Um, I'm Jeremy, I'm from Crazy Christmas Crew, obviously. And uh, we're gonna get started with the uh, Lighterama sequence editor. So go ahead and open that program up. You'll find that it prompts you uh, to start a new musical sequence or a new animated sequence. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and start a new musical sequence. This is what you'll do after you get your channel configuration done, which you saw in the previous video. You're gonna to wanna to open up a new animation uh, musical sequence. All right, just double click this or click OK. It's gonna prompt you which file that you wanna use. Um, most people do use an audio file, however, and I will most likely make a video in the future coming up about programming to a video file. Um, you would use this if you decide to have uh, some sort of uh, video projection, either at your front, front window or what have you, to uh, integrate uh, your video with your, your audio and your show. I have considered doing this, and I, it's one of my thoughts to do this year. Uh, I just have to make that, uh, it's not going to affect the way I do any programming, so I just got to bite the bullet and decide whether or not I'm going to be doing that, and then secure another projection, uh, projector. In this case, we're going to use Wishlist uh, song, uh, Mannheim Steamroller, I believe. It's going to come up with a, a, some, an information uh, window here. All this stuff, honestly, is not necessary to fill out. What you want to pay attention to is right here, which is Channel Setup. Use a Save Channel Configuration Template. All right, click on that, and then this is little Browse button. It should come up to your sequence where you saved your file, as long as you didn't change your location. And we went ahead and go ahead and select 2015. Now, you want to set the timing to this music, and there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Uh, one way I always suggest to use at first is called the Beat Wizard. So you want to go ahead and select the Beat Wizard, and then click OK. And it'll come up to this next window. Now, what the Beat Wizard does is actually listens to the soundtrack and detects the beats. Uh, and it will actually place uh, tick marks uh, on every beat. Now, this is not always accurate, especially if you're using any sound, uh, any music files that the sound, the, the tempo fluctuates at all. Um, but this is always a good place to start. Keep in mind up here, time range. If you do have a song where the time, uh, the tempo fluctuates and you know it, like the beginning is a slow beginning and then it goes to, you know, a good beat, let's say Mariah Carey's uh, All I Want For Christmas Is You, you can determine when the actual music starts, when the, the upbeat tempo starts, and click just this part of the song, click where it, fill out where it starts, and that is the ending point, three minutes, 39 seconds for this song. And then you can uh, go ahead and, and just do the beat wizard from there. And then you can use the tap of wizard for the, from, from the beginning. All right, and this song, it's a pretty steady beat, so we're gonna go ahead and see what it does. Just hit the start button. And as you can hear and see that the beats are pretty much accurate. Okay, now you can sit here and listen to the entire song if you wanted to, but for the first, you know, 20 seconds or so, you can determine that, that yeah, it's got a good, good, uh, pretty good beat. All right, go ahead and stop it. Now, how many beats you select here? If you, in this case, we have four beats um, because it is a four-four time. Um, it really doesn't matter if it's three, four, 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 or anything else. As long as it's on beat, you're good to go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and st I stop that, and I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and exit. And as you can see, when we get our screen here, we've got a line. Now, if we went ahead and play this, there's a little play button at the top. You see that each line is the new beat of the next song. Okay. Um, that is that is basically the uh, the basics to get the song here on the screen. Now, when it comes to programming the songs, which we will do, uh, we'll do another video on uh, on more detailed programming. Um, before we leave this video, I want to go over a couple things and what they are. As you can see here, you have a toolbar. This toolbar includes, you know, your open, uh, your close file, save, um, cut, copy, repeat. Um, got undo, redo. This, this button right here is your animation. If you hit this button, it will actually bring you to your saved animation, which is stored with your channel configuration of your house. 
uh, which you should already uh, have. This way, if we actually um, keep this in, go here, zoom out, and if we hit the play button, which you can find right here in the corner, you'll see the song will play and any programming that you have going on will do at the same time. Okay, right now we have nothing programmed, so nothing's going to happen. All right, this here is the view fades as ramps. I suggest I have to use it this way. If we go here real quick, and I'll get to it, if we went ahead and fade this music in, or this, this light in, you can see where it starts from nothing and kind of fades into complete white. If you flip this over to ramp, you can kind of get a better sense of where, how, how that, uh, that fade works, and I, I, I need this because I, I need a more of a visual thing, so I need the ramps. Um, you have uh, the view channel buttons, channel colors, view time scale, view waveform. This is another form, uh, another tool that I use. I always select this, and as you can see, you will actually see the beats in the music as we play. And this will help with programming as well. You've got your zoom in and out when it comes to uh, the actual, as you can see, I'm clicking this button and it's kind of making the channel so I can see more of the channels at once or zoom in. And then you got zoom in and out when it comes to time. So you're actually seeing more of the time this way. Um, you've got your play and play again buttons. When you're playing, you have your stop button. Uh, you have your select tool. So if you just wanted to select this, you can use the select tool to select that section and then right click to copy or do whatever you need to do, which we'll go over in detail in some future videos. Um, and you have a toggle button, which is actually pretty cool because if you click it, it toggles it on. If you click it again, it toggles it off. Now, when you're using your standard on button, okay, no matter how many times you click it, it'll always stay on. Now, you can always right click and turn it off and do it that way, but the toggle will keep you, you know, one click is on, one click is off. All right, this doesn't work for fade, it's just, just on and off, okay? Um, you have your fade button, uh, I'm sorry, your intensity setting button, which right now is automatically preset at 50%, which you can, and we'll go in the future on what, if you want it to be different, how to set that up. You do have your fade, which I've kind of went over, all right, fade up. If you select one, it'll fade from zero to 100 in one bar. Select two, over two bars, three bars, it kind of goes like that, all right? If I wanted to continue the fade here, you can see it'll go up to 100 and then back down. So you might want to, you're going to want to click and hold and drag to determine the length of the fade. Same thing with fade down, okay? Um, and then you've got some intelligent fades and uh, some more detailed uh, custom buttons here uh, when it comes to shimmer and uh, twinkle. All right, and then some custom twinkle fades and shimmer fades and foreground and background effects, background and foreground effects. So you're, you're, you'll have a lot of these tools which will, you know, you basically play with it and you'll learn it. That's how I learned it. Um, but we'll go over in a little bit when I start to program the song uh, because I use just about everything um, on here. Now keep in mind, a bit of advice when you start to program your song, any song, you want to always make sure you save periodically. Um, set a timer on your watch or your phone for five, ten minutes and make sure you come up here and save uh, constantly. All right. You don't want to spend hours working on a project and then your computer freezing up. I don't know if it's an issue with the software, but I have had that happen to me before and it is extremely, extremely frustrating. It does not have an auto save feature to it. You must and you want to save constantly. Also, a bit of advice on saving, have a jump drive, not only save it to the computer, but save it to the jump drive as well. I had a computer crash on me in the middle of Christmas season. Luckily, I had it on a jump drive. I was able to transfer it to a new computer within 10 minutes and run the show without losing everything. So that's that. But make sure when you're done, you want to go ahead and save it. You can either click the Save button or go in first time. You want to make sure you save as. And in this case, it'll be um, wish list. Uh, L -I, uh, that's how they spell this song, and I'll put 2015. Now it's going to automatically save it in my sequences. I'm going to keep that just default folder so it's easy to find. And then every time I want to resave it now, if I make any changes, I can go ahead and just click the Save button, and it's automatic.
So once we get uh, this part down, we're going to want to go into a little bit more detail, which we'll go in the next the next video. However, I wanted to mention one last thing on this video. When you're selecting and when you're trying to program this, if you listen to the song, these are the channels that we have to work with. Okay, And you're probably going to want the lights to do more than just to the every beat. Okay, So what we need to do is subdivide the timings that we placed in here. Um, and these subdivisions will help you have a more exciting show and uh, more flexibility to be able to do what you want to do. All right, so what we're going to do um, is going to hit our selection tool, click the first thing and hold down the shift button on the keyboard, and then we're going to go ahead and scroll this all the way to the right to the end of the song. And then while we're holding over here, let go of the shift button. Now we have the entire line, the entire from start to begin, finish selected. We're going to right click and we're going to click subdivide timings right here. Now it's going to say how many cells do you want to divide each cell into. Now keep in mind, yeah, I come from a little bit of a music background and I was a drummer. So in my mind, the best way to do this is to kind of set it up to the beats. Now we have a, a line at every beat of the music. Um, I find that if we divide that into quarters, so we actually have four beats per beat. So one, two, da -da, da -da, da -da, and we have one, da -da, we, can, we can divide each beat into four beats. It gives us enough time and it makes sense. Everything is even. If we wanted to go up or down, everything is pretty much still even. So what I'm going to do is after I selected this, subdivide so timing is going to hit number four and then press OK. And you're going to notice that the lines on the screen got a lot smaller. And this now is divided into quarters. All right, so each beat is divided into quarters. Now, if I wanted to do um, two, three, four, this should be the first beat. All right, if I wanted to do what, money and uh, two. All right, we can go down. It's hard to tell there, but everything is in beat, and that's the downbeat. This is the going to be the downbeat of the next of the next song of uh, the next beat, and then every four squares will be the next downbeat. So I, I actually did this wrong, but uh, let's just make it more have it make more sense. All right, this is just simple. This is not what I'll have this show doing, but you'll notice that. It's in tempo, and if I wanted to, I can go ahead and select this, okay, and I can hit copy, and then I can actually hit paste multiple all the way to the end of the sequence. I oh, didn't mean to do that. It's been a little while. It's been about a year, uh, probably a little less than a year since I've done this. So I'm going to undo this, paste multiple this one all the way to the end of the sequence. And now if I were to play this, you'd notice that it's actually on beat. Every time that the Eve comes on, is actually on the beat. And I just divided the, sub, the, the, the program settings, I did, those, those check marks, I just divided them into four. So I like to do that first, and I'll probably go through all my songs. I won't do any programming to them, but I'll make sure to go ahead and, and, and subdivide the timings, get all the timings right put the wave format on, do basically what we did here minus any of the programming, and I will do that for all my show, my entire show. So when I can get to it, I can program this a little bit until I get done with this song, or tired of this song, and I'll switch to a song that's uh, you know different. Keeps me a little bit the same. Anyway, I'm running out of time on this recording, so next, next recording will be hitting a little bit more on the more detailed programming. I'm actually going to start programming some of my show. Um, and we'll be working with fades and, and shimmers and some of the special stuff and intensity settings. So I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you like, uh, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.